symptoms might we notice with an individual who has problems with urinary elimination? Well, we would notice things like urinary retention, um, uh, just not noticing that the patient is voiding, or a complaint of lower abdominal pain, or even distension, meaning um, enlargement of the lower abdomen uh, from the urinary deten retention. You can notice urinary incontinence, either from the patient reporting that that happens to them, or from you know a patient being in um, a brief, which is what we call a diaper, but we call it for adults, we call it a brief. It's more digni dignifying for the patient. Or the patient might report urinary discomfort. Oftentimes there's discomfort, if it's going to happen, it's when the patient is voiding. And oftentimes when reporting discomfort, patients will talk about it as a burning sensation. So here are some of the nursing diagnoses that Davis offers uh, related to urinary elimination, a risk for infection, impaired urinary elimination, a readiness for enhanced urinary elimination, urinary incontinence, and we're going to talk about some of these um, causes for or types of incontinence in a minute urinary retention, or a risk for a urinary tract injury. These are all nursing diagnoses, or we could call them problems that we can identify with patients who have a risk for Im impaired elimination. Now with urinary retention, acute retention is the absence of urination, despite having a full bladder. So the bladder's full, it needs to be expelled, but for some reason it's not happening. Um, chronic retention is difficulty starting the stream of urine, uh, the sense of not fully emptying the bladder and urinary frequency using the bathroom a lot. So you can have this acute retention where it's just happening really quickly um, or something that takes time is happening over the long run. And one of the clinical findings for this is the distended bladder is palpable above, above the symphysis pubis, that pu pubic bone in the lower abdomen um, in the upper pelvis where you can actually palpate this big distended bladder. But don't palpate it too, too much because that's very uncomfortable for the patient. Now urinary incontinence refers to an involuntary release of urine when the patient is not trying to void. And there are types of urinary incontinence. Stress incontinence uh, happens, you know, oftentimes with older women. Um, it's when the muscles around the uh, urethra aren't supporting the bladder well, and they can have voiding uh, stress incontinence leakage with things like coughing, sneezing, laughing, jumping. Um, urge incontinence means a, an urge to go frequently to the bathroom to void, or there can be a mixed incontinence, which is a mix of stress and urge incontinence. Overflow incontinence happens when the patient's unable to fully empty their bladder, and then whatever remains in their bladder um, is expelled uh, without the patient's desire um, or unexpectedly um, because they're still uh, urine left in the bladder. Now functional incontinence, the urinary tract is fine and it works just fine, but for whatever reason the patient isn't able to make it to the toilet to void appropriately into the toilet. Uh, and it could be things like arthritis or a back injury or um, an inability to communicate that they need to go to the toilet. So these other reasons um, prohibit the patient who has a normally functioning urinary tract um, to make it to the bathroom in time. And finally, reflex incontinence uh, refers to the detressor muscle, that muscle that contracts to expel urine from the bladder. That, that detressor muscle spasms and then forces urine out on its own. Now remember, urinary discomfort is something that patients can report with urinary elimination, and it includes a, a pain, a burning sensation on urination, a sensation of pressure, and also a sensation of urgency that they need to go right now, and oftentimes frequency as well, where they feel like they need to use the toilet very often. When you're doing a physical assessment related to urinary elimination, you wanna take a full health history on the patient. And you want to ask them about their patterns of elimination and if anything is distressing in those patterns. You want to talk about diet and any, any new diet changes that might have happened. 
Um, and any voluntary or involuntary um, emptying of the bowel or the bladder. So you're asking the patient, is this a normal for you? What is normal for you? How often do you void? Um, do you get up in the middle of the night to, to urinate? Is this distressing to you? Have you had any diet changes? What kind of things do you drink? What kind of things do you eat? And then when you're talking about physical examination, the first thing you're going to do is inspect. And you would inspect means look. Um, you're going to look at the abdomen, watching for any distension, meaning um, in a larger size, um, and also inspecting the genitals, uh, looking at their urethra os, os meaning opening, um, and looking for any lesions or redness. And then you can palpate as well. And when you palpate the abdomen, the abdomen should be soft, non-tender, and non-distended. You can also assess the urine uh, through visualization, looking at the color, looking at the clarity. Is it clear or cloudy? Is there a strong odor associated? And the amount of urine the patient is voiding. Now, there are a number of diagnostic tests associated with urinary elimination. The most common of those is some kind of urinalysis or dipstick testing, which tests for a number of things like bacteria, glucose, in the urine um, and also looks at specific gravity. Specific gravity refers to the concentration of the urine and a concentration for urine, a normal concentration is between 1.005 and 1.030. You'll want to write that down. A normal specific gravity is between 1.005 and 1.030. A very high specific gravity, higher than normal, would indicate a very concentrated urine, and a very low specific gravity, lower than 1.005, would indicate a very dilute uh, sample. So all of these things can help with incontinence management, both the management of the urine um, that's expelled and also in trying to avoid it in the first place. And speaking of avoiding, there are invasive procedures, uh, surgical interventions that, are, um, that involve urinary elimination. Dialysis is when you filter out the blood and basically create urine in a machine rather than in your kidneys. And they do that for people whose kidneys are no longer making enough urine to filter um, waste out of the body. And so they hook them up to a machine three times a week, three hours at a time, and they run their blood out of their arm um, into this big machine, which, fo which uh, functions essentially as a big kidney. And then they put the cleaned blood back, the filtered blood back into the patient's body. And that is how they're able to eliminate waste. Um, other ones about urin uh, urinary retention, uh, we can always do straight cats. We've learned about straight catheterization. That's the in and out catheterization um, to immediately relieve any distension and retention from uh, urinary retention. For kidney stones, uh, there's a, a renal calculi is the official name for those. There are a number of interventions that can be done to remove those stones, which cause obstruction in urine output and urine flow. Um, there's also bladder surgeries and urinary diversions um, where a urinary stoma, an opening, is placed in the uh, uh, lower abdomen and urine is drained directly from the bladder into an outside pouch rather than um, through the urethra. And finally, a nephrectomy is the removal of a kidney for one reason or another, often due to neoplasms, tumors, that sort of thing. But it's really important as nurses that we promote normal urination for our patients. And that includes things like providing for privacy, assisting with positioning, um, identifying the client's normal pattern for toileting and facilitating that uh, routine in the hospital setting, making sure that we're providing adequate fluids and nutrition as well as providing for hygiene. In terms of urinary retention, we're going to monitor for abdominal distension that would indicate an over full bladder. We're gonna measure for post void residual. So there's a bladder scanner that we can put right on the skin and it will measure how much, how many mLs of urine is left in the bladder, which will tell us if we have an overflow problem or a retention problem. And then we need to drain that 
retained bladder. We need to get that urine out. And we'll do that through things like a straight cath where we put it in, drain the urine and take it right back out or an indwelling catheter with a drainage bag, or even that suprapubic catheter, the one I talked about where they create an opening in the lower abdomen, a stoma, where urine drains into a bag on the outside of the abdomen. Now remember, if you have a patient with an indwelling urinary catheter, you wanna make sure that you're doing things that are going to prevent UTIs, maintain a free flow of urine so that doesn't get backed up into the body, uh, prevent the transmission of infection, make sure you're maintain, promoting the normal urine production through things like good adequate hydration, and then doing good skin assessment and skin care to maintain the skin and the mucosal integrity. And in terms of urinary incontinence, you want to prevent skin breakdown because the maintaining of the moisture of urinary uh, incontinence on the outside of the skin can cause skin problems. You want to encourage and teach lifestyle modifications, um, implement bladder training where they toilet on a schedule, encourage the client to perform Kegel exercises to strengthen the pelvic floor muscle, muscles, and there are anti-incontinence devices that the doctor can discuss with the patients as well if needed. Now there's a special subset of incontinence and that's called enuresis. Enuresis is nighttime bedwetting. Most commonly we're going to see this in children. And there are both pharmacologic, surgical interventions available as well as parent teaching to help with enuresis. Here's the interrelated concepts as it pertains to elimination. And finally, here are the featured exemplars related to urinary elimination. We're going to be specifically focusing on the incontinence um, exemplar for the purpose of this week's class. But remember, we've already studied urinary tract infection. So if you have notes on that, go back and think about now you know your UTIs from the infection concept. And now what, what new things do you know or understand now that you understand elimination as a concept? So kind of go back and take a look at those UTIs and start adding this knowledge of these different concepts to the exemplar you've already learned. The last slide on your uh, PowerPoint, which you have as well um, in your Blackboard, is just a nice little concept map of some of the key things about this uh, concept, and it's going to pull out some of the most important things you need to see. That's it for the concept of urinary elimination. Remember, the concept of elimination is really one nursing concept, but for the purpose of this lecture, we're dividing it into two ideas of urinary um, elimination and bowel elimination. So I'll see you for the next video.